he's ready to go. Uh, DC, love uh, love the time that you guys give us all all the time here on the show, and appreciate you as always, my friend. You have seen a lot. You have seen a lot during your basketball career and life. Just your thoughts on that insane first quarter last night that we witnessed. Um, you know, in, in many ways, um, it, it was it was something that I think has been brewing for for quite a while. Just taking the easy passes, uh, kicking the ball forward, and then us just making shots. Um, I, I think the, even the next step is going to be kind of what you see in the fourth quarter is is having a quarter like that, but adding like lockdown defense to it. Um, but it, it was great to it was great to watch. I mean, guys were not hesitating. They were sharing the basketball, knocking down shots, and it's been a long while since I, I've seen Sacramento act up the way that they did in Golden One. I, w- I was super proud and excited for the fans. Yeah, you you got a long relationship with Kings fans, man. Golden One Center. I I got a chance to go out to my first game. A couple of weeks ago, I know I know Nick finally got a win. I don't know if you heard, Doug. There was a cattle's curse. Nick had never seen a win at Golden One Center since coming to Sacramento. And it is, man, it is an atmosphere. It's an environment in there that not a lot of NBA franchises got going. Is this as as rowdy and as excited as you've seen in arena, the, the Kings home arena? Um, I, I would, I mean, obviously it, it's not Arco yet. I think it's still sure. beginning and to define itself, but just listening to, to the fans and there, there's a fever pitch you guys that happens when the, and we have really, we have, we have smart fans. So they understand like when the ball begins to move around and they can almost feel that the next pass is coming. And when it comes, they're like super excited mm-hmm. and all of a sudden the release of the ball and you can almost, it's palpable, man. You can feel it. And then the explosion once, once the ball goes in the basket and that just, it, it continued to happen time and time again, <laughs> which, was, which I was, which I was super, super excited for, man. That was, uh, you, you're right. That, that first quarter was something to behold. DC is with us. Have you ever had a quarter like HP? I mean, Maybe not the NBA, or maybe you have, maybe at any level where, like, I said this earlier, Doug, watching him last night, it was one of those moments where it did not matter how quick he took the shot into the shot clock. It did not matter how, you know, deep he was when he decided to take said shot. He was, you felt like it was going in. Have you had one of those moments, and what's it feel like? Um, You know, it's weird. It's... um, You know, because if you you make it to the NBA, you guys, or, or... you've probably experienced something like that at, at some level. And I, I would say it's, um, it's really effortless. Like there's no, there's no stress. Everything just feels right. Um, you see the basket and w- once you shoot it and it goes in and you find what they call a zone, uh, once you find that, you just want to get the ball and just throw it at the basket. Cause it's pretty, it's pretty much going in. I almost just wanted to just, you know, just see him keep going until he took a heat check and he, and he missed one because <laughs> it was, it was, it was beautiful. I mean, HB shoots at a really high clip. He shoots quality shots. He he's not a selfish player. So to watch him have that type of success, um, knowing how hard he works and uh, what he dedicates of his, you know, personal life to the game of basketball. Those are the moments that for the, for the player, you're just, you're, you're super excited. You know, it was, it was HB last night and it's been him a, a few times lately as he's on, he's on this heater lately. We also saw Keegan Murray go off last night, big night for Trey Lyles. We kind of, we kind of know what to expect with, with Domas and with Fox. And then there's, there's a different hero every night or a couple of different heroes every night, seemingly, around those two guys. Is that something that you guys kind of know going in? You see a matchup and you know you're going to feed, whether it be HB or Keegan or, or, or Trey Lyles, or is that something that sort of happens over the course of a game and, and you find a matchup or you find a hot hand? It, it can happen both ways because sometimes it's how a team plays. Like the, last night, Memphis is a heavy nail help team, meaning that they're going to collapse on the paint when you drive. And that's what you saw in the first quarter. We drove 
and, and they were short drives. They weren't drives all the way to the basket. As soon as you beat your guy, there's going to be help there. And then we just kicked it ahead and shot the ball, and, and it went in. So some sometimes you allow what a team does really well to play against them. And then there are some nights where you see a, a player that you think that you can go at and, and you try to, to actually go at them. That can kind of – it can get a little bit off sometimes because when you force the game, the game doesn't have that same flow to it. And I think to answer your question, you know what you get from Fox, you know what you get from Domas. Why everything else kind of falls in the way that it does is we're playing the right way and you let the game dictate where the basketball needs to go. Doug Christie is with us. He, of course, is on the uh, Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, one-stop Honda shop. Doug, Coach Brown waxed poetic about HB last night. From your point of view, what has HB meant to this team? I think that he is the the soul and spirit of our team. Um, I think he is the professional example of what you want in Kings basketball on the court and off the court as uh, working out, as taking care of his body, as arriving early and staying late. All the things that you want in a basketball player to represent our organization, I would say that that is who Harrison Barnes is. And I don't know what coach said. I, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> see it, but just from, from my standpoint, from being around HP and seeing how he goes about his business, seeing how he respects his body, how he respects the game, how he arrives for his teammates and, and he plays the right way. Like those are all the things that, that you want. And if you, if you get that, I think that the Kings fans are going to be happy with the outcome because they know that this is a person that uh, in the community is going to be there, um, is going to take care of themselves the right way, come every single day and put in some serious work to make sure that they are delivering a product for them that when they walk through the turnstiles, they are proud of. Is he is he a vocal leader, a guy who will pull somebody aside, one of the younger guys, and, and, and give them one of these lessons? Or is he more of just a lead by example and it rubs off on, the, on his teammates around him? You know, it, it can be a little bit of both. I don't think he's more of the raw, raw, pull you aside. Um, but there have been guys that I witness HB mentor, but he does it in, in his own way. So sure. it is more of, of the example. But in many ways, that's, you know, you, you get what you need, not you get what you need, not what you want. And many times a player doesn't, you know, uh, you want that person to pull you aside, but actually you just need to witness it. And by witnessing it, then, you know, it might be the next stop. It might be this stop. And all of a sudden you find yourself doing some of those same things that you witness somebody that's been a professional for many years and has had the the highest level of success from, uh, you know, representing our country to being on the winningest team in the history of basketball uh, in a season and winning the championship with Golden State. Doug Christie is with us here on Cattles and Rami Sacktown Sports. Doug, from the middle of the third quarter last night to the end of the game, that just tremendous run from you guys. A, a lot of people will fall in love with the offense, and it's always the sexy thing in the game, right? But defensively, you guys were locked in. You gave up 10 points in the fourth quarter. How can you carry that over? Because it, it seems to me you guys have had spurts of good defense, but there's been a lack of consistency and, and ability to kind of carry that over. What do the guys have to do to sustain that level of play on that end of the floor? You know, the, the word, guys, that I use is, is to own it. You know, coach can continue to call timeouts, and I, I look at that as a little you, – you micromanage because you're correcting mistakes and you're doing different things. And I remember Phil Jackson used to notoriously not call timeouts, and it was more of like – hey, listen, we went over this. You have to figure this out, and you have to figure it out in the fire. And I think that that's where once we own it in that way, in that capacity, where the players begin to work it out on their own and fight through whatever it is and solve the problem of whatever it is, I think that that's where the consistency will begin to to show. And then all of a sudden, you know, 
what you guys are witnessing it has a sustainability that far outweighs what we're actually witnessing right now at this time. And I think that that's ultimately, for me, what I always came back here for was to make the fans proud to represent this organization, to put it on the type of pedestal that I think that, that the fans and the organization deserve. And um, it's a lot of fun to to try and figure out that puzzle and then to watch them uh, try to figure it out as well. You you mentioned the word sustainability and, and the big news today regarding the Kings. Monty McNair, the general manager, gets a contract extension. Nick and I both think that bodes well for the sustainability of this success. As you said, DC, how good of news is that inside the building? And, and how long have you guys been waiting for this news to come down? I think it's tremendous uh, on many different fronts. First of all, like Monty is the, and, and Monty and West the, together, the assistant gentleman, they've yeah. done a tremendous job. Like they, they've put together a ball club. They've hired a the staff. They've done many things behind the scenes that, that you guys d- don't see that to try to support um, the things that we do on a day-to-day basis. And then to now pair that with success. Um, I think it's the right thing to do. I think it lends to the stability and the the roots in the ground that when the wind blows, the tree doesn't fall over because now we're starting to begin to have something that, to the point, is sustainable. Uh, So super happy and proud of and for both of those guys because they truly, truly deserve it. And uh, a good day for Sacramento, I mean, in, in many ways because these are the things that uh, I've always said, you know, when I was doing what you guys do and was on TV mm-hmm. and we were losing. And I said, you know, it's really it, it's funny until, you know, the rabbit gets the gun and all of a sudden, you know, we, we, we flip things and we start spanking on people and we start going after them. And, and we're getting we're getting to that point. And these are the things that help um, sustain that and take it to another level. Doug, always great catching up, man. Appreciate your time as always. Let's do it again soon and uh, keep bringing them dubs back. We appreciate you. You already know, guys. Go Kings. Go Kings. There goes uh, Thanks, Doug. Doug Christie on the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. And as Doug just underlined there, something that we've been talking about, um, the stability. The stability of a move like this, getting Monty in town for the long term, signing him to this extension, Wes Wilcox to an extension, uh, and also Coach Mike Brown. We'll continue with our thoughts on this Monty McNair extension. And we've got some details, Rami. Oh. How long of an Ooh, extension know? is this? Yes. We'll oh. tell you how long of an extension this is for Monty is. in 90 seconds. I'll stick around. Cattles and Rami. Cattles and Rami. Sacktown Sports. 